One prompt is all you need to start building working products with AI. So with the rise of reasoning models, LLMs can now build some insane products with just one prompt. And Claude's newest 3.7 model is hands down the best for one-shot prompting. Now before continuing, I do want to note that if you want to build something fairly complex, you'll need to go on cursor and continue iterating on a growing code base rather than trying to do everything in one prompt. So if you do want to join a growing community of AI builders that are leveraging AI to build complex products, make sure to check out our community at AICodePathways.com where we help beginners become top 1% AI builders. Now these one-shot prompts are extremely effective at creating what I like to call micro apps. These micro apps will be insanely useful for businesses that want to quickly accomplish a very specific task. You can now easily spin up a custom app designed just for your business in a matter of minutes. So rather than having a worker prepare a report or automate a task, you can just use a one-shot prompt to essentially create a micro app for one specific task. And this will be huge for people that aren't exactly AI native. They can essentially create products in just one prompt in plain English to either automate a task or accomplish a goal. And you can also use micro apps to boost your productivity in a way that's specific to you. This could mean custom study tools, reminder apps, or organization systems. By using custom micro apps, you can have these be built tailored to your specific liking. And this will obviously be huge since you can basically reduce the amount of subscriptions you currently have. And lastly, these micro apps can be built just for your own personal enjoyment. So for example, you can just spin up custom games that you want to play, such as chess with added rules, a seven letter wordle, or basically anything else that you can think of. Now let's go ahead and start building things with one shot prompting. Now one thing to note is that you can actually run code directly with Claude using their feature called artifacts. So this just opens up a new window that directly does run your code. So how you want to get there is just go over to your account and then you can go to settings. And inside your settings, you just want to make sure that artifacts are enabled. So this shows things like code snippets, text docs, and website designs. And then again, if you're building apps or products, you'll be able to see the artifact directly without having to paste it into an IDE, for example. Now let's go ahead and try to one-shot prompts directly from Claude. So what we want to do is first make sure that Claude 3.7 Sonnet is selected. This is the latest Claude model. And then for the thinking mode, we want to make sure this is on, so it's set to extended. What this does is make the AI model a reasoning model so that it actually thinks before it provides your response. And then inside here, we can say, please help me create a playable portal game. And then for the features, we can just indicate that we want the keyboard to be grayed out slash green as the game progresses. Uh, we want keyboard functionality just to make sure we can type with our keyboard. And then lastly, let's make this a four letter wordle. And then we can say, please look at the attached text for all the four letter words in the English dictionary. And then I've just gone ahead and loaded the official four letter words list in Scrabble. We can make this easy, just copy everything inside the site and then paste it directly within Claude. Now let's go ahead and see what they come back with in one prompt. So we can see that because it's the extended model, they're thinking on how to create this Wordle game with an interactive keyboard. And again, we wanna make sure this is a four letter Wordle game then they'll begin outputting the code for us. So let's go ahead and wait. And great, again, this was all in one prompt. As you can see here, all we simply asked was Claude 3.7 Sonnet to create this playable Wordle game. And we have a fully interactive and functional four letter Wordle right here directly inside the artifact. Now let's make sure this Wordle game actually works. So we can just maybe type in something like star as our first word, able, um, Bail, page, wake, and I don't think I'll get this, but we'll type in fame. And we can see that it came over, the word was maze. We didn't successfully get the word because I'm not too good at four letter wordle. But as we can see, we have the entire functionality here. Everything that we noted within the instructions have been implemented. And again, this was all in one prompt. So if we wanted to kind of like tidy this up, make this look a bit nicer, we can add in additional directions. But once again, I just want to show in this video how you can basically one shot most things on Claude if they are simple enough. Now let's go ahead and push the limits of what one shot prompting can accomplish. So here I've written out as much detail as possible for creating our application and we won't be using artifacts for this one because I want to load images to make sure this app is as close to the original product as possible. So in our case here, we want to create a fully functional clone of Flappy Bird from scratch. 
So to start, we want to include, like I mentioned, as much detail as possible. So we have the complete code. And then we're also telling them that we want to use Python here instead of the React based components that they were using previously. Because again, we can run this separately in an IDE. And then moving down, I've noted that we have image files saved inside the project folder and they must be used. So I have images of the bird, the top pipe, the bottom pipe, and the background, as well as the size and dimensions for each. And then we just want to let the AI know that the code must use these images inside our application. And then below this, we want to add animations for the bird's flapping wings. So again, this should just stimulate flapping when the bird either moves upwards or part of its idle behavior. And then we have the core mechanics just in case Claude is missing anything. So this is how the Flappy Bird game works. We must navigate through pipes and there's a scoring system. Basically, after every single pipe, we successfully pass through and then a game over condition when we accidentally touch a pipe. And then I've written out that we want code documentation just so that there's clear comments on how the game is actually working in the back end. And then for the appearance, we want to make sure the top pipe and bottom pipe extends fully just to make sure it looks a little bit more neat. For functionality, we have a scoreboard and then difficulty scaling. We want to make sure to either increase the speed of the pipes or decrease the gap size as the player score increases. So as we pass more pipes, the game should get harder. And then lastly, I also want to add sound effects each time we pass a pipe. So again, I included a point.mp3 file inside of the project folder. So we just need to make sure that the code implements this file as well. And then lastly, we want this to be a one shot. So we want to present the full solution in one response. Now let's go ahead and run this and see how our game looks like. And we've generated the entire code for the Flappy Bird game. So let's copy and paste this entire file into our IDE and load in our images as well. All right, so heading into cursor here, all I have is our project folder. So like I mentioned, we have a background image. We have the bottom pipe, the actual bird, the sound effect that happens when we pass a pipe, and then we have the top pipe here. So now what we want to do is simply copy and paste the code that Claude gave us. And then let's try and run this application. So we can see this is 511 lines of code. Then to run, open up the terminal. We can do Python 3, Flappy Bird. Awesome. So now we have the game loaded inside a separate window. And what we can do is press any key or click to start. And this looks very promising. This basically looks like a one to one replica. We have the little cute bird here. We have the background that we loaded. Let's make sure we have animations as well. Each time we flap. Perfect. The top pipe and bottom pipe seem to be loading. And as you can see, our bird is just chugging along. And this pretty much just looks like the original Flappy Bird game, which again is pretty amazing just for one prompt. It is a fairly and then as you can see, once we do hit a collision, it says game over, we have our score 10. And then the high score right now it's set to zero. So let's make sure this resets to 10. So let's go ahead and just lose the game on purpose. And we can see that the high score is 10 as well. We have a fully functional game all from one prompt. Again, this is just a little bit more complex because I wanted to bring in images for the background, bottom pipe, top pipe, and the actual bird. And like I mentioned, you can also just use one shot prompts for quick business solutions. So here I have a prompt to create a dental patient record system as a React application. All I did was add in some important nodes to use supported libraries. This is just so we can see the artifacts preview. And then the core features, for example, if we did work at a dental office and we wanted to quickly build this out, we'll have a patient records management system, a dental treatment chart, x-ray image attachments, search and filters, as well as an appointment scheduling system. And then we have just some key components just to see how this um, application should look like, as well as implementation details. And then once again, we'll want to make sure that the Claude 3.7 model is thinking. So we'll click extended and enter. Awesome. And as we can see within one prompt, we have a fully working dental patient record system. So we can view all the different patients on the left hand side. And then we can also add patients simply by clicking add new patient and inputting all their information. Exiting out of here, we can also view dental charts, medical records, and billing for each patient. So we can see that John Doe has $320 worth of charges and has paid $320, so he has no outstanding balance. And then finally, we can 
schedule payments or just schedule appointments between each different patient as well. So again, all of this data is dummy data, but this is completely functional. So if we did want to add our own patient, we can simply click add patient and then add the information based on whoever we're working for or which office we are currently in. And then finally, we're able to either search for patients and filter, or we're also able to upload x-rays for each patient. So under Jane Smith, if we wanted to upload an x-ray, we can see from here, we can add an x-ray image, denote the type as well as the date, and add any additional notes for the x-ray. AI has truly come a long way, and even though you won't be able to build a full stack application in one prompt, you'll be able to spin up some pretty powerful micro apps either for your own personal enjoyment or to just solve a very specific use case within your business. And like I mentioned, feel free to check out our community if you are interested in building full stack applications completely with AI, and make sure to like and subscribe for more AI building content.